In this video, I'll be talking about the Explorer view in Substance Designer. The Explorer view is quite important because it's the view in which you start and end your graph creating sessions. I'll be talking about how to create, save, and publish your packages, as well as how to create, manage, and export your graphs. And finally, how to import or link your resources, as well as how you can use the Explorer to bake meshes in Substance Designer. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want to actually create a package. There's a few ways to do this. Uh, the standard way that people do is through File, New Substance. And you can also use hotkey control M there. You get a template view here, and most of these settings can be changed afterwards, but they do provide a shortcut to get started easier. We're going to start with an empty one just uh, right now because it's the simplest. I can set up a name here, but all of this can be changed afterwards. So I'll just click OK. And this creates a new unsafe package with a single resource in there, a new graph. Now, Packages, it's important to understand, they're just containers for your projects. They're like a zip file, an archive. If you've worked with Unreal or Unity, you should be familiar with this concept. So there's a few ways to create packages, as I mentioned. The easiest one being through the file New Substance or this little plus icon here. Alternatively, you can also create an empty package by right-clicking in an empty area in the Explorer, selecting New Package, and it gives you an empty package, and then add your resources to it manually by right-clicking on the package you want to add the resource to, saying New, Substance Graph. You get that same uh, template window here. I'll click OK, and you see I've created the same thing. If I want to close this package here, because I've accidentally opened a new one, you can select it and right-click and say Close, and it'll ask you if you want to save your changes. Alternatively, the hotkey for that is Control F4. It will try to close the selected package, so I don't want to save my changes there. Being able to add resources with a right click means that I can add multiple graphs to a single package. So I can right click and say New Substance Graph, create another empty one here and call this one New Graph 2. Click OK, and you see we have a second resource here. Now, it's important to understand the difference that every time I use File New Substance or Control N, I'll do it again, it actually creates a new package instead of adding a graph to the existing package. So that's why knowing this right click New Substance Graph method is also fairly important. Again, I'll close this package with Control F4. And we've got some empty graphs here right now, which don't give me much information. If I want to remove these, say they are an accident, I can right click and say Remove. I'll confirm, or alternatively, I can select an item and I click on the hotkey delete. And again, confirm I want to remove this item. I'll add a new substance graph, and this time I'll pick a different template. I'll go for physically based metallic roughness, and you see that it gives me a bunch of graph outputs here that are predefined compared to the empty template. If I click OK, we'll talk more about what happens in the graph window here, but what's important to understand in the Explorer is that I get a little expand tab on the graph, which now gives me an overview of all my graph outputs. So the Explorer actually can show you what a graph is actually outputting and what it's giving you. So we've talked about uh, creating new graphs, but if I right click on a package, there's actually three methods in here. If I hit new, we've mainly created substance graphs, but you can also create bitmaps, vector graphics, folders, substance functions, 3D scenes, and even MDL graphs in here. Keep in mind that with the new menu, you create a resource completely from scratch. It'll be empty, except for uh, graphs where you have a template chooser. So you have to build it up uh, yourself completely. The second option, import, you can import a few specific types of resources, so bitmaps or vector graphics in SVG format, or AXF, which is an appearance exchange format mainly intended for MDL graphs. This will bring in an existing resource, and what it will do is it will create a copy of the existing resource inside your package, so you can edit it inside Designer afterwards. The link method, on the other hand, will reference the existing resource on your hard drive and not create a copy. So if I import a bitmap here, such as this baked position map, it creates a copy of that inside a new resources folder called position body wings. There's a little thumbnail that shows me what the resource is. Alternatively, I can also say link bitmap, and I'll choose another one this time, such as this texture here, click open, and then I get a reference to the file on disk. So these baked maps, if I would rebake the world space normals body wings, Substance Designer would automatically update this file because it's just loading the reference file on disk. 
while the position body wings here is imported, this would not update if I change the file. That's the main difference I want you to understand between importing and linking files. Finally, you can bring in a few more files through link, such as, for example, here a 3D mesh. So let's do that. And I'll load up this low poly mesh that I've got here right now. Once it's loaded up the triangles, it asks me if this is a UDI mesh. It's not in this case, so I'll click no. And you see I have a new resource in here with a drop down that shows me all the specific materials that are assigned to this mesh. So keep in mind, these are the names of the materials that I have assigned to this mesh. With bitmaps, if you right click them, there aren't very many options. You can do things such as reload, show and explore and relocate. But with meshes, you have a few more uh, options. All the way at the bottom, there is bake model information. If I click that, it gives me the baking window. Now, there are specific videos that deal with the baking here, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. But essentially, this is the only way to get into the baking editor for Substance Designer. You link in your mesh, you right click and say bake model information. I've talked about references and resources being used, so I'd like to point out that if you right click on a package, you can choose dependency manager here. I'm not going to go into too much detail. There is a separate video dedicated to this, but this dependency manager can be used to manage your references. You can imagine if you get a file from somebody else that's referencing a file that you might not have, or if you rename a file, this will mess up the dependencies inside a package. The dependency manager helps you solve these. So far, I've only talked about bringing things into a package. Saving a package is fairly straightforward. Of course, you can use the file menu or right click, but the hotkey is obviously Control S. Once you do that, I get a save dialog. So I'll save this one as new graph. And with that done, we can move on to exporting or getting files out of Substance Designer. There's two ways to do this. It's fairly important that you understand the difference between them. The first simplest way is to select a graph individually. And again, it's important to understand that a graph is what actually generates the textures. A package can contain one or multiple graphs. So we'll select a graph. You can right click and you can say export outputs as bitmaps. This gives you the export outputs window. And here you can set up things like the file format. You can give up a pattern for uh, the naming. So it will use, for example, the graph name and the identifier of the output. And then you can determine which outputs get exported to a specific destination. This is fairly simple. It's just a bake of uh, the files and uh, nothing fancy happens. If, on the other hand, you would like to bring this graph into Painter, such as a generator, a base material, even just a simple brush alpha, then you'll have to use a different file format. You can see that the package I've saved right now ends with SBS. SBS is the source file for using files in Substance Designer. This keeps all the editability. The graphs will be there. You can edit them completely. All the resources are nicely ordered, but you cannot bring this file outside of Substance Designer. If you'd like to take your packages, graphs, and all the resources outside to engines like Unity, Unreal, or into Substance Painter, you have to publish your file. This isn't a complicated process. There's a few things you need to set up in your graph to make sure it works properly. We'll talk more about that in the graph video. But essentially, it involves publishing the package through either the right-click menu or using the Control p shortcut. If you do that, it asks you where you would like to save your graph. So again, this is a separate file. It's a different exporting process. I'll click Save, replace this one in this case. You can set up the default file name, and there's a few things you can turn on and off. One thing to point out here, if you want to keep dynamic resolution, such as you have uh, with most graphs in Substance Designer, make sure that the output size checkbox can be checked and is not grayed out. You'll actually get a yellow warning triangle if it's not. I'll click OK, and it's published. Keep in mind that you will only be able to publish your SBSAR file if you have already saved as an SBS file. Now, what's the difference between an SBS and this SBSAR file that you publish? An SBSAR file is a optimized, compressed, smaller version of your SBS file that is optimized for bringing it into separate engines like uh, Unity, Unreal, or into Substance Painter. It strips away the editability of the graph, but it keeps any parameters and any dynamic options that you might have set up. So see it as sort of finalizing your package to get it ready to bring into a separate application. The difference between exporting bitmaps is that you do this on a graph and that with packages, you publish them by selecting the package itself. Keep note of these buttons at the top. They actually change depending on what I select. If you've 
published a package once before, you can always select the op option Publish SPSCR file as previous to skip the whole uh, process of finding a file name and location as well as approving the options. It'll just republish with the same settings as you did before. Finally, one last thing I'd like to show is that you can actually transfer content between packages. I'll create a new package here, and in this case, I would like to bring some of these resources over to the other package. So I can select the resources. I'll take the position body wings and the mesh. You can copy these, or you can use the hotkey control C, select the new package, hit control V, and it brings in the resources to the other file. So this is a good way of transferring resources between packages in case you want to make a duplicate or you want to transfer something over. So that's it for the Explorer view. Uh, I hope you've learned something from this, and um, I hope you understand how you can start and end your projects with the Explorer view. See you in the next video.